Well, hello everyone. If you just give me a few minutes, I'm sharing out um, the live stream this morning. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, super excited about everyone joining us today. Give me just a few minutes and... I've got two more groups to share and then I'll be ready to go. So good morning and welcome to another edition of Live Your Best Life. I'm uh, Dr. Julia Royston bringing you another edition of Live Your Best Life. Now, I'm not going to be on very long um, today. I just want to be inspirational, impactful, effective more than anything else um, to let you know that you were put on this earth for a purpose. There is a reason why you're here. And I am super excited to, to share what I have today. I'm going to get on out of your way because I know you have many places to go and many Many things to do. Welcome, welcome, everybody. Good morning, good morning, and welcome to everyone, to everyone. So again, I'm Julia Royston of BK Royston Publishing, Royal Media and Publishing, and the Book Business Bosses community. If you're ready to be a Book Business Boss, that's me, but also the host of the Live Your Best Life. Now, the replays are uh, available at liveyourbestlifewithroyston.com. That's liveyourbestlifewithroyston.com. Normally, I have guests, but this week, I, it is just me. You just have me um, seeking to empower, inspire, and continue to move forward on this daily life. Now, normal is just not in our in our vocabulary right now. Normal, what that means and what that is, I don't know. But um, <laughs> we have uh, embarked on a new normal. We are embarked on um, something totally different, something new and exciting. We've never been in this place before, and um, I don't know how many times and if we'll be in this place again, but woo, help us, help us, God, today and every day to live that best life that we were designed to live. So um, I have four things, and then I'm going to get on out of your way. Good morning, good morning, everybody. So um, I'm wanting to talk about legacy building, building that legacy that you were designed to build, to you were uh, that life that you were designed to live, that life that um, that purpose that you're put on this earth. And whether you like it or not, whether you know it or not, and I don't care if you're in your 20s, I don't care if you're in your 70s, you're going to have a legacy. You're building that legacy every day. You are leaving um, your footprints in the sand of this life. You're leaving your footprints, your handprints, your thumbprints on um, this life every single solitary day. It does not matter whether you're working from home, uh, whether you're on live, on uh, streaming, or it, it's people that know you in your neighborhood, and, and uh, there is a mark that you're leaving on this earth. So number one, I want you to remind you of, and just think about it and reflect. Think about the gifts that you have. What are that? What are those natural abilities? Because each one of us has them. Each one of us has a gift down in the inside of us. Something that has been given freely of God to us. Now, it's not that we don't have a responsibility to it because I know people that have gifts and they haven't respected their gift. Thank you so much for the hearts and shares. They haven't respected their gift. They haven't even, or forget monetizing their gift. They hid it. They wouldn't allow it to be worked. They li or, uh, allowed it to be manipulated. But they d didn't want to use their gift at all. Good morning, love. 
And so therefore, looking at the gifts, talents, and abilities that God has given you naturally, stuff that you do and you give away, forget monetizing them, you give them away. So look at the gifts, talents, and abilities, things that you've learned how to do, things that people have shown you how to do. That's a part of your legacy. That's a part of your stamp and your footprints on the earth. Number two, number one is gifts, talents, and abilities, what that looks like. And hopefully in the next couple of weeks, we'll be talking more about gifts and being gifted. And then number two, do you have a goal for your gift? Do you have a goal for your gift? You know you have a gift, talent, and ability, but do you have a goal for that gift? Do you have some place that that goal should go? Is there a developmental piece that you need for your gift? If you're a teacher, I'm a retired teacher, but if you're in education at all, you know that to keep your license, good morning, and doctors have to do it, lawyers have to do it, engineers, anyone in a professional setting, there is a certain amount of professional development that has to happen every year. We had to have 21 hours, 24 hours, always at more but 21 hours of professional development. So therefore, there were goals for my gift. My gift wasn't just out there going willy-nilly. I developed it. I um, added more skills to it. I upgraded it. Um, I add, add, added more advanced resources and tools. And, and there's things out here that are available that you don't even have to pay for, that people have webinars and information out every day. So do you have a... A good blessed morning to you too. So do you have goals for your gift? So number one, what's your gift? Are you using your gift? Are you hiding it? Is your gift in isolation just like we're in isolation? Because just because we're at home does not mean other people do not uh, are able to discover and and, um, be blessed by our gift. Number two, having a goal for your gift. So write that down. Number two, what is your goal for your gift? What is the objective? What is the point? Why do you think God gave it to you? Why do you think you have that ability and that effort in your life? And then number three, key thing for um, legacy building. Number three is key thing for legacy building is serving others. Now, I know sometimes with the advent of social media, people can tell how they serve. Oh, I, we dropped off meals to the homeless. We did this. But are you willing to serve even if it's not public? Even maybe you may have to d- be anonymous because I've done things and I didn't want my name associated with it. I didn't want it to be widespread because it really wasn't necessary. The necessity was that the other person be blessed, be helped. I don't talk about every single client I have. I don't talk about every single situation I have. It looks like I talk about every event I go to, but I'm not going to events too much anymore. Except promotion and things that I have to do for my business and that continue. Some things, some things I serve people with, you may never know. You may never have a clue about. And it may never be known. So therefore, okay, so number three, how are you serving others? That's clearly one way that you will definitely be known. So number one, what are your gifts and talents and abilities? Number two, what's the goal for your gift? What do you, how do you want your gift to be used? How do you want your gift to be remembered? How do you want your gift to be maximized? And what do you want your gift to be? Sometimes you may have to go back to God and say, you gave me this gift, what do you want to do with it? Because that's what I do all the time. God, what do you want me to do with this gift? What do you want me to be with this gift? And then number three, how are you serving others? As a legacy builder, how are you serving others with your gift? Now, sometimes that may be uh, a gift that is just given. That may be an opportunity to give, um, to serve others with your gifts. And, and there's no monetary return. It's not a reciprocal. You just needed to help someone. Sometimes you're serving others in your business. Sometimes you have a business that is a for-profit business that that helps to serve. Believe you me, the authors that I have helped, sure, I appreciate their uh, their their um, fulfilling their publishing fee and contract. But there are times that 
we put the contract aside. We put the book aside. And sometimes I've had to pray over the phone. Sometimes I've had to minister in ways that had nothing to do with the book. It had to do with them being as a person, as a human being. So sometimes your business and your ministry will kind of mesh together. Um, I'm currently in the middle of writing a book. Did you, you know that I'm always writing something, but God has given me something new and kind of interrupted. And it says God in my business and it is going to be a 30 day devotional. So look for it in about 60 days because it doesn't take me long to write nonfiction, but it really talks about God in my business, how God and my business go together, making sure that sure that I walk in integrity and I have ethics, but God wants to be a part of my whole entire life. He wants to be a part of my ministry as well. He wants to be a part of my business as well. He wants to be in my house. Okay, so that's a sidebar. But how are you serving others? And then number four, how are you imparting in the next generation? What are you giving to the next generation? Um, it has been said that success leaves clues, so therefore we should see those footprints. We should be able to see um, those steps that you've been able to take. Sure, there are some things that we may never see, some behind the scenes things that are private that you may never know. Have you ever been to a funeral and people stand up and they tell things about the person? You're like, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Well, it's because they didn't broadcast everything they did. They didn't tell everything they did and everywhere they went and every dollar that they gave somebody and every time they gave a bag of clothes and every time they went to the grocery store and paid for somebody else's food and every time they were in the drive through and said, I'll pay for the people behind me or, you know, the people two, row, two um, cars behind me. They never did, you know, they never did have to say that. But they're standing up saying, you know, uh, well, we were facing foreclosure and um, this Mr. John, he came through and we were uh, starting a church and we needed chairs and they brought it in and they were, that's a part of your legacy. Some things are private, some things the whole world is going to know and it's public, which we love and, and it's, it's aw awesome to know, but there are some things that you're going to be anonymous about. So the keys to your legacy building, thank you so much. Uh, for being my scribe today. So number one, what are your gifts, talents, and abilities? God gave them to you. And gifts, he told us in the scripture, come without repentance. So sorry, he's not taking it back. Gifts and callings come without repentance. So there are some gifts, oops, he's not taking it back. You, it, it's, it's yours. He gave it to you, but he also gave you the grace for your gift. There is a grace that comes with your gift. There is, the, it doesn't matter how many people do the same exact thing that you do. There is something about when you do what you do, how you do it, nobody else can do like you can do it. Now, sure, you may feel like they're better. Other, they may get a national, international recognition with it, but there's still the voice God gave you, the ability God gave you, the book he put down inside of you, the uh, ability to fix and, and straighten and organize and do hair. And I can't wait to see my hairstylist. But to do hair and those gifts with your hands, crafts, I can buy gift baskets. I can buy all the crudiments, but it still doesn't look as good as somebody else. Uh, somebody else can do it. Because I don't have the natural gift for that. I'm not very crafty like that. I have other gifts and talents. So I'm not jealous of you. I just ask you how much it is to uh, to, uh, to build that gift ba basket. And I pay you and ta-da! And give it to the gift to the person I wanted to have it. <laughs> so number one, gifts, talents, and abilities. Sometimes this week you may have to go and take an inventory of what your gift, talent, and ability is. And look at it again. So those, some of those things you, you know, you never thought about before or that you hide and that you do on the slide, God could be wanting to use that gift. He could be wanting you to teach that gift to somebody else and help somebody else learn. Have you ever seen on the timeline, people say, I need help with this. I need, and you do it naturally. You could help somebody else. Mm. Number two, having a goal for your gift. What do you want your gift to do? Number three, serving others is a part of your le legacy. Building up someone else is a part of the legacy, the imprint, and the thumbprint that you will impart and leave on this life. And then lastly, number four, impartation to the next generation. 
What are you leaving after you're gone? What have you left? What have you imparted? Now, I have no biological children of my own. Of course, as a teacher, I have helped to impart many things in hundreds of children and not only my own. But I have left my footprint. My books are there and will be there long after I'm gone. Long after, oh, Miss Rorson, you know, she, you know, and I'm finding my students. My students are married. They have children. They have hopefully have something that I imparted into them, imparting into their lives and the betterment of their lives so that they can leave the legacy on for the next generation. It's time to be legacy building. What is the legacy that you want to leave on this earth after you're gone? Now, I realize in this season, people are passing on. People are leaving. I'm like Miles Monroe. I've said it often. I'll say it again. I want to die empty. I want to die having done, fulfilled, written, imparted, said, gone live when I didn't feel like it, been nervous, but jumped off that, leaped, as Steve Harvey says, leaped when I didn't want to leap and taken out of my comfort zone so that when I stand before God, I can hear, well done, now good and faithful servant. You did everything I called you to do. You didn't look to the left. You didn't look to the right. You didn't get jealous or hate on anyone else. You rooted them on. You said congratulations when they were doing better, doing more, seeing more, doing incredible things. I could stand and applaud. But when it's my turn, I'll do what he called me to do. That's my that's my um, uh, encouragement for you today. Build your legacy by doing what you're supposed to do. Don't worry about the left. Don't worry about the right. Pray for your sister. Pray for your brother. Intercede on their behalf. If you can help them, great. If you can serve them, great. If you have a business that'll help them, awesome, great. But when it's all said and done, what did he call you to do? What did he call you to to build? What did he call you to establish? What gift did he give you? What ability did he give you? And do that. Find yourself doing that. Find yourself being that. Find yourself walking in that. Find yourself every day, a little at a time, working on that dream, goal, and vision that he gave you. He came that you may have life and have that life to the full, overabundantly, a flowing but also to love him with all your heart, but love your neighbor as you love yourself. So a part of that gift, a part of that legacy is what you do for others. Not just what it just profits you because it's going to profit you. Your gift will make room for you. It always will and bring you before great men. But there are others who need you too as well. So. I hope that helps you. I hope that gives you just four keys to legacy building as we continue to go on this journey of uncertainty and concern. And oh my goodness, what do we keep? Well, first off, I keep putting one foot in front of the other. I'm thankful each day I wake up and each day I'm moving forward just a little bit closer to what all that God put inside of me. Every day he's giving, bombarding me with new ideas, plans, visions, and goals. And I just seek ways and outlets to reach him. This is Live Your Best Life broadcast. Not my life. Not the lady down the street. Not that coach you saw online. That person who did the webinar. Uh Uh-uh. Your best life. Not somebody else's, but the life he created you for. The life that he gave you. It may not be perfect. It may not always be easy. It may not be fun. We've had disappointments. We've had losses. We have had um, things to hurt us. People to betray us. But it's still all working for the good of them that are called and that love God and called according to his purpose. So last thing, as we do in church, we got any announcements. (laughs) My announcement is for you to mark your calendar for this Tuesday, May 19th at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on Facebook Live or we'll also be on YouTube Live as well for you to be able to join in with our virtual book fair. Now, most people know me as the book lady. 
and the publisher and the author and the singer in some circles. Um, and I've loved to have gone to events and had plane tickets and, and, and paid for table vendor fees, but those events have been canceled. So now we're having virtual events. And first off, let me say thank you for all the authors, all their books, and everyone who has participated in the past. Um, you'll continue, especially through the rest of this year, to see more book uh, fair events, more virtual events. Um, this month is a flyer that you should be seeing on my timeline of the ladies. Uh, I've got uh, 12 ladies who are joining me on May 19th and on May um, 23rd. As Saturday at noon. So we'll be on May 19th at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then on Saturday, May 23rd at noon, high noon. And I've done it that time because I have a, a young lady who's going to be joining us from London. And uh, their time zone is 5 p.m. So I didn't want to get too late at night. And so, but I didn't want to get too early. Woo! Having different time zones is fun. So join us May 19th at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and Saturday, May 23rd. Now, also on next month in June, look for the dates, look for the flyers. That's the men only uh, virtual book fair. So there are men who write too as well. Not just the ladies are writing. The gentlemen are writing as well. So I'm super excited. Oh, I'll probably have almost 20 gentlemen uh, uh, on the flyer. It's going to be a huge flyer for, um, uh, June, 2020. So look for the gentleman, uh, next month as well. If you are interested in writing, I have to put a plug in a shameless commercial and plug before I go, uh, reach out to me. Let's talk about your book. If you're ready to write and ready to move forward, talk with Royston.com, schedule your appointment that takes you directly to my calendar. Uh, look at the times that I have available. Look at your calendar and schedule, and then let's have a conversation. If you have written a book and you're like, I need help, I need help, go to the bookbusinessbosses.com, or we can schedule a conversation, talk with Royston.com, and help, and, and you, I can help you. Um, get your book to the next level. We do coaching and training and resources that already have and available to help you take your book to the next level. So I'm Dr. Julia Royston bringing you another edition of Live Your Best Life. That's what I want for you. That's a part of my purpose and being of which I was created to help you live, not my life, but to live your best life. My prayer is today, tomorrow, and always live your best life. Have a, have a great one. Bye-bye.